Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So anyone that's been watching the videos over the last few days, we've already kind of covered what's been going on in either separate videos or we just consolidated everything together. This is going to be another one of those consolidated videos, but it's kind of just a brief recap of what we've already gone over here. So either way, whether you're seeing this for the first time, you're seeing the channel for the first time, make sure you're hitting that like button. Also make sure you hit that subscribe button. But in any case here, we do have severe weather ongoing right now. And actually, I would be streaming this, but a little bit later, I do have somewhere I have to end up going I have to pick someone up. So that being said, no stream tonight. I apologize. I'm really sorry about this, but this came up at a bad time. Everything just kind of came up at a bad time here. But yeah, that's why I'm not streaming. Thought I'd at least put something out here for you guys because there are some things that I want to make sure everyone has been made aware of if they weren't aware already. So for one, we already know big slight risk tonight is mainly going to be for damaging winds and hail. There's even hatch risk over towards West Central Kansas. Tornado threat did get upgraded to 5% a little bit later this morning over towards Minneapolis and Duluth here. We also have Garden City and Liberal that actually end up getting a 5% area as well, which was surprising. I was expecting the conditions to be a little bit more favorable up here, not so much down here, but it kind of makes sense when you actually look at that. I'll go into detail with that, especially if you're a member. But in any case here, we do end up seeing a downtrend over the next few days in regards to severe weather. While I was hoping that we would see a no severe thunderstorm risk where we would just see the light or lime green color that you're seeing here for the general thunderstorm forecast we did get a couple of pesky areas where we got marginal risk here so the streak continues unfortunately and another feature that we're going to be talking about here is potential tropical cyclone one and that has relevancy over here towards houston and brownsville while we're not expecting a direct landfall here there is a small chance that you get an isolated tornado too because this area would be in what would be considered the right front quadrant Storm's going to bring in plenty of forcing, plenty of moisture. So there is a chance of an odd spin up or two, particularly would favor more so just to the south of Corpus Christi. I think Mexico is going to see the majority of the impact there. But in any case, though, we also have the 5% wind and hail threat. The southwestern high plains seem like the point of interest for the hail. Then as we go to day three, northeast becomes the point of attention here in regards to the severe weather threat i think we mainly will see a damaging wind threat couldn't rule out the threat of a tornado but i think it's marginal no pun intended and then as we go on through days four through eight on day four potential is too low so the trend is good for now however with the pattern change that we've been talking about recently so as we get towards the back half of the week and beyond we do start to see increasing potential for severe weather but not a lot of confidence amongst other models here so that being said the pattern does seem like it becomes more active and eventually i would say or i would go as far as to say that over towards the northern plains is going to be the main focal point there and also north of the border too while i don't have any major avenues that i can go where i can take a look at canada in regards to forecast i may actually end up doing a stream there the weather pattern does look favorable i do have a few resources that i could look at but we'll get into that another time in any case though we go over to the gfs here also taking a look at the year here on the bottom left corner for our model comparison you'll kind of begin to see exactly what i'm talking about here what we're looking at currently <clears throat> we have um the southeast here under ridge here and then we have a lot of troughing out to the west classic case of a negative pna and then as we continue to go forward here, you can even see the storm track as it stands currently. Really favorable for more of the uh, northern high plains here, western high plains as well. And we're going to continue to see that, of course, into the weekend. We also have potential tropical cyclone low, which we'll talk uh, potential tropical cyclone one that we'll talk about. I can't believe I just called it low. But in any case here, we're going to see most of the impacts again over towards Mexico mostly towards texas i wouldn't expect too much other than some heavy rain maybe some strong winds increased surf and the chance of an odd tornado or two over the course of the next day so we go beyond that point <clears throat> notice how we begin to see a little bit of shift in this ridge 
and then we also see a storm track that is really favorable for the northern plains we continue to go forward with this ridge moving at times there may be some days where the severe weather threat does increase a little bit because there's a characteristic that i always look for with severe weather events and it's something like this these little ski jumpers right here as we call them whenever you see that at the right time it can a lot for severe weather development and this is on the evening of the 23rd heading into the 24th where i'm thinking maybe towards eastern montana maybe over towards the montana north dakota line we could see some severe storms we'll have to see if that ends up verifying or not but in any case and like you'll see with the euro down there the potential does there is a lot of potential for multiple severe weather events the significance right now is still questionable but fact of the matter is we're seeing a very we're seeing a storm track that does favor the northeast right now for sure eventually we do start to see some ridging out towards the west and i do think at some point we may see the ohio valley and maybe even the southeast start to get back into the action here at least in the meantime as well as what i've been talking about in recent videos with the tropics here I'm seeing more and more low pressures popping up into the Gulf, which is kind of alarming considering the conditions we have favorable there that we have there. They're becoming more favorable as we speak. Wind shear is starting to lighten up there. Temperature is already hot over towards that region. So well, the there is a lot of potential if things can get going. But as we continue to go forward here, you continue to see the storm tracks over towards the north and east, starting to see that ridging out to the west. Like I said, that's pretty much going to be the majority of our pattern change. We're going to be switching from the negative PNA that we're seeing currently, and we'll go back to that picture again. This is where you see the trough here. It's the ridge here, and towards the end, you can see it right here clearly. Same thing, pretty much showing up on the euro, even though it only goes up 10 days versus 16 on this. So the significance in looking in those maps, you can actually see the temperature probabilities, and if you remember they coincide almost perfectly with where those ridges are where you see those above average temperatures i'll give you a closer look at that map here but the heightened probabilities are right where those high pressure centers would end up here the probability of above average temperatures in particular catches my attention over towards both these regions here over here out towards the east and this is what we're dealing with currently and we're going to continue to deal with for the next few days we're dealing with probabilities at 70 to 80 percent and that ends up being the case over here towards the four corner states, but right around the four corners region itself, we actually have a 80 to 90% probability of above average temperatures here. Of course, like I mentioned before, this is right around where that high pressure situates itself once it makes that trek back out west. Really, it's actually a new ridge that forms, but in any case though, it's going to be hot over towards both of these regions so make sure that you are staying hydrated and staying cool try to avoid being outside for extended periods of time unless absolutely necessary and even then have a plan of action to get inside if you start to overheat but in any case though another thing to make note of here and this is going to be due in large part to the tropics is going to be the increased probabilities of precipitation over here of course over towards the gulf of mexico states with the changing weather pattern and the wind shear beginning to lighten up, also seeing a lot of energy over these regions as well, I would expect to see these probabilities actually increase in confidence as we go forward. Right now, they're only at about a 40 to 50% chance of above average precip here, but I do think that we will have a couple opportunities that will help boost that percentage a little bit, maybe into the 50 to 60. We'll see how things kind of pan out from that point. I think the chances will even go up further as we get towards the 8 to 14 percent range of course everywhere else over towards the west here partic particularly over just to the west of the four corners region i'm expecting it to be pretty dry no surprises there of course towards the northeast it's pretty busy right now and then over towards the northern plains for the most part i would expect above average pr chances of uh, precipitation here not really a surprise but we'll continue to see that trend as we go forward here even on the days through uh, 8 to 14 this is even heading into july here notice how that spreads back out to the west almost in perfect correlation with how that jet stream was set up where you saw that storm track over here again towards areas like montana over towards north dakota south dakota and 
a 40 to 50 percent area becomes more focused into the up of michigan northern wisconsin and northern minnesota here so not surprised to see that we also see the increased probabilities of precipitation over here again towards southern texas do think that that will be due to increasing tropical activity as time goes on here and then of course we also see florida in that above average area a lot of you have actually been talking about florida in regards to how dry it's been especially further up towards the north like i said before you will be getting your chance at precipitation very soon we'll begin to maybe even see an increase in these probabilities as we go forward here typical shower uh, florida showers are going to be coming into play very soon though just wait until the, later into the video so we're making a quick call back to the temperatures here and my concern and the reason why i'm bringing this up is of course we've already been seeing excessive heat we're going to continue to see that and the threat is actually going to increase and become a bit more widespread over the course of this next week in particular a big part of actually why i made this video here is because we're going to see widespread 90s and triple digits become even more widespread as time goes on here so this week we're getting back into the 90s over towards the south. We're starting to even see that spreading pretty far into the northeast now. Even New York City is getting into the 90s at this point. But watch what happens as we get into next week here. You can see that out towards the southwest. We're getting those 90s and triple digits there. Getting into the 110s over there. But as we get into the start of next week, we're starting to see 95 over here in Atlanta. We're seeing 100 in Oklahoma City. And we're even starting to see 100 over here towards maybe towards uh, Virginia here. This, I think this might actually be Richmond here. Uh, forgive me if I got that wrong there. I'm pretty sure that was Richmond. But we're starting to see the triple digits become a lot more apparent over here. We see that in Columbia now. We're seeing that over towards, I'm guessing this would be Columbus Air Force Base in Georgia. Or no, no, that's Warner Robins. I can't, whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, it does, but anyway, like I said, we're going to be seeing a extended period of excessive heat as we go throughout the rest of the month here. Eventually, we do start to see a little bit of a lightening up of that as we go forward. And I do think that that could be due to a potential tropical entity that tries to develop. But of course, like I said, we're looking up to about 384 hours out. It's very hard to try and forecast something that's that far out, especially since there's a very limited number of models that actually go out to that range. So that being said, take it with a grain of salt. I do think, however, that we're going to see some impacts to the weather pattern as well due to the tropics here. The tropics are always a wild card as to how the overall weather looks in the long run. So what we're seeing now may not occur i do have pretty good confidence though unfortunately that we're going to see a good bit of excessive heat you can see the tabs over here in the bottom left corner showing the risk of hazardous temperatures and also the temperature outlook on days 8 through 14. that being said let's go ahead and actually look at what our moisture is going to look like this is our surface dew points here and this is also going to let us know what we could be dealing with to go along with that heat here I do think that the Gulf of Mexico is going to be relatively uninhibited. We may see a slight drop off in these dew points, so it may not feel quite as bad. But even so, 50, 60 degree dew points with 90 degree temperatures is still pretty brutal. But I would rather have that over 70 degree dew points to go along with that. Because that muggy type of heat, working in that especially, for anyone that does work outside and is watching, you know what I'm talking about. It's not fun. I do it too. But in any case, though, we really don't catch much of a break here. As time goes on here, though, as that weather pattern changes over the Gulf and more tropical systems come in, we will have to deal with more tropical air as well. So we will have to be on the lookout. Thankfully, with the likelihood of a cool down starting to become a little bit more apparent as we get into July, maybe we can catch a break here but there will be a few days i will warn you a few days where it's going to be extremely hot and staying cool staying hydrated will be essential for a large part of the country 
All right, so now we're talking tropics here. And this has been a big topic amongst the weather community as of late. We have two areas of interest right now. We have potential tropical cyclone one, which is developed over here towards the Bay of Campeche. We've been talking about this one for a while, as well as this system over here that is over towards the West Atlantic and is slated to head off to the West over the course of the next couple of days here. Could make a close pass to land. We'll see if this ends up turning into anything. The thing that I want to make note of with this system here, though, that the chance of development has actually dropped off over the course of the next seven days, whereas before it was at 30 and is now dropped off to 20. And if you actually go ahead and look at the satellite on both of these systems, we're going to start out with the one in the Bay of Campeche right now. The reason why this is not actually considered a tropical storm because it actually has met the threshold for the winds and as well as the low pressure the lowest recorded pressure is actually under a thousand millibars but looking for the central point of circulation there's no defined eye wall eye or anything like that or any particular point where we can see clearly where the lowest pressure would be if you were to compare this to what a typical tropical storm or hurricane looked like you probably would think what the heck is this only thing that i can really tell that's going on with this clearly right now is this new area of convection that's popped up here. I'll pause it so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. But if you actually put this in a loop here and you see how that pops up there, that area right there is a new area of thunderstorm convection within this storm somewhere around here i can't really pinpoint it exactly but somewhere around here is where the point of lowest pressure is it's a lot of cloud cover it's very messy circulation not very organized at all and this is why they are not going to consider that a tropical storm just yet could it still become a tropical storm in our first name storm of the year kind of doubtful but I won't say that it's impossible because anytime that I, I would say that, nah, it's not going to happen. Watch somehow it happens. Well, it's not entirely true, but anyway, all jokes aside here, definitely still want to be on the watch here over towards areas like Houston, Corpus Christi and over towards Brownsville. This is going to bring rain. This is likely going to bring some strong winds, increased surf, and maybe the threat of a spin up tornado or two. I would say that that threat is kind of low but we'll have to see how things progress from that point onward so now we're going to uh, we're going to shift our focus here towards this other tropical wave over here that's towards west atlantic this isn't a super impressive looking feature either i don't want to have it moving that fast but you can see that we are getting increasing amounts of shower and storm activity but just like with the last system there's no well-defined point of circulation around an enclosed low right now. So obviously you can't call this a tropical system of any kind at the moment. It's just more so a wave if nothing else. But depending on how things progress throughout the next day, next few days here, we could see an increase or decrease in the likelihood of tropical development here. Now, a big part as to why we're struggling to see any sort of development here is going to be greatly due to the wind shear here i don't know why that map was on the setting that it was but you can see around potential tropical cyclone one or ptc one you can see these brighter colors here are signs of strong wind shear with tropical systems you don't want wind shear you don't want a lot of wind shear and we're seeing quite the abundance of it here that's really going to be the limiting factor for this system otherwise with the gulf of mexico temperatures being near 90 degrees fahrenheit this storm would have likely strengthened and became a tropical system maybe even a hurricane who knows but in any case here wind shear is our friend in this situation and we see that continue to be the case over here even towards the western atlantic so it's going to help keep both the tropical wave here and also this low pressure area here ptc1 pretty limited now as we continue to go forward here i still do think that this is going to help increase the probability of rainfall over here towards florida and the deep south as a whole but i don't expect anything major at least over the course of this next week here 
Now, there are some troubling signs here that I've been talking about a little bit, especially in the tropical outlook and tropical update videos I've been doing. But you can see the wind shear eventually does start to weaken here as time goes on. And if we get any sort of low pressure areas that pop up over this area, it's going to be a much more favorable environment and the likelihood of a tropical system developing will increase, especially as we get towards the very end of the month and heading into July. So going to be need to be paying extra close attention over here if you're in the Gulf of Mexico states here. So Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, make sure you are paying close attention. Just check back every day or two on the channel and probably we'll have a video out for you guys. But in any case, though, another thing that's kind of grabbed my attention and we're actually going to go back to the model that we were looking at before, even though we weren't intending to at this point in time. The ensemble member shows the prop the uh, low pressure centers that could develop here. And the more numbers you see here, the higher the probability of a low pressure developing. Same thing with these blue areas, which are high pressure. And if you look closely, you can actually see PTC one over here, potential tropical cyclone one makes its way on to Mexico. Not really a surprise there. And then we see a very small probability of this system coming in here, which is our tropical wave. Like I said, I don't expect this to be much of anything significant, but we'll have to keep an extra close eye on that. Of course, like I said, this increases the chance of rainfall for sure. Now, as we continue to go forward here, what I want you to pay attention to is this little yellowish gold and even orange area that starts to pop up here as time goes on. We're starting to see increasing probabilities of low pressures popping up around a much more favorable environment, especially as we get later into the month here. From the 26th onward, especially, the wind shear does start to lighten up significantly. And that's where my concern starts to increase for potential tropical development after that point. The ensemble member is showing it pretty well. And even some of the operational runs have been kind of showing it as we saw earlier. So we'll have to keep an eye, particularly over towards the Big Bend, over towards Florida, maybe again, this little straight between Florida and Mississippi right now seems like the greatest point of interest currently. So we'll have to see how things pan out, but my concerns are starting to increase just a little bit here. Do I think it's an apocalyptic scenario? No, but definitely seeing some signals for something to pay extra close attention to as we get closer and closer to July. And some of this is even reflected on the precipitation model here that we're looking at with the GFS operational, because we were just looking at our ensemble here. But across the board, if you actually take a look at this, if I can get this to move, hang on. Okay, I think we've frozen. There we go. But in any case though, here's PTC1, along with our severe weather for tonight. Again, just a reminder, if you're over towards Miss Minneapolis, Duluth, through parts of West Central Iowa, over towards Omaha, Lincoln, and over towards Central Kansas. Threat for damaging winds, maybe a couple tornadoes is not out of the question here. I don't expect this to be a super long duration event, but definitely something you need to be paying close attention to just to make sure that you aren't negatively affected. And if so, to mitigate those negative effects. Let's so continue to go forward. That's PTC1 working its way out of here really quick. It's actually going to even bring some rain over here towards the southwest, which will be nice for some of us. How far west that makes it, still questionable at this time. We may see some in Arizona, maybe not. We're kind of, kind of in the middle ground with that right now. But as we continue to go forward, we see another system that tries to pop up, makes its way towards East Mexico, maybe towards Texas once again. But notice, just like we were seeing with the ensemble models, we're starting to see more energy popping up here around the Gulf with that pattern change, as well as the change <clears throat> in our moisture over here towards the Southeast and even the East Coast as a whole. So with this little pattern flip that we're gonna see, eventually we're gonna see some more ridging out to the West, gonna help increase the temperatures. And then the shower and storm probability starts to return towards the Eastern half of the country now. And as time goes on, like I said, need to be paying extra close attention to this particular strait between the Yucatan and also Cuba here, 
which is going to be where we start to see more and more pieces of energy, more low pressure areas developing. This is the most organized area that I've seen out of all the runs so far. Does this become tropical? There's a better likelihood of it, but given the fact that we're over 10 days out, I'm not going to read into it too much. We'll keep an eye on it over the next few days. And if it does pop up, of course, we'll be one of the first to let you know. As time goes on, though, you start to see a weather pattern like previously indicated increase that shower and storm activity over the southeast as a whole, along with the potential for tropical development to go along with it. So big changes ahead, especially as we head into July. Uh, expect an outlook for July very soon. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be like I said, it's, things are getting interesting here. So. Make sure you're doing what you can to stay weather aware here. But that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Drop a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new, and also hit that share button as well. I'm going to get out of here and get ready to handle my business here. But that being said, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Take care and have a good night.